Hi, I'm Tony. This is SV Tapatia. We're building this cruising sailboat. The sailboat's designed uh, to be lived aboard, to travel the waters of the world, and uh, to be built relatively comfortably with a fairly ordinary kit that you might have at home with materials that are readily available. And let's see what's going on this week. We started off this week in here working on these upper end plates on the rudder, just glassing them, getting them encapsulated, sealed against moisture intrusion. Worked on the other side first of all, I've flipped the rudder over since, um, and as I say, glass that one side. Had quite a nice big delivery of wood um, for the keel structure. Um, Douglas fir, a couple of words about that. Um, because as I said in the intro, one of the things about these boats, the Benford Dory and a few other designers boats are that they're actually designed to be built by the home builder. They're not, they're not intended for professional building, although I'm sure the designers will be entirely happy for a professional to take one on. They are really intended for the home builder and that makes them very ideal. If you look at um, the works of George Bueller, for example, and there are quite a, well, a number of them being built on various YouTube channels, George Bueller boats. Um, you know, his discussion of wood that's, that's okay for, or that's suitable for boat building is quite eye-opening, I think, to the, to the home builder. And the Benford door is, uh, Jay Benford stipulates Douglas fir for framing and for all of the, the structural elements of these boats. So that's what we've done. We've got Doug fir. It's, you know, fairly durable wood, it's readily available, grows locally. So in terms of the environment, environmental impact, it's, it's you know, relatively small. And uh, as wood goes these days, it's relatively economical. But um, when I was in the woodyard buying this wood, 
I did get some good news because the owner there uh, told me that the wood prices have peaked and are in fact going down a little bit at the moment. So um, if you're planning on <laughs> buying a load of wood to build a boat, it might be worth waiting a few months. Um, early next year, he suggested prices could be back to almost what he describes as normal. That's his forecast, not mine. Returning to the rudder, once it was dry, it was ready for a sand up, turn the rudder over and do this side. And I did this side just with some scraps of glass I had, glass cloth. Rolling the rudder over, she looks a bit heavy, doesn't she? But it actually isn't particularly heavy. I don't think it's any heavier than any other stern hung rudder for a boat of this dimensions. Uh, when I look at the rudder on Hazel's boats, a stern hung rudder on a Freedom 28, um, it's a very similar size piece of kit, must weigh a similar amount. Um, but it, what it is, is a bit of an awkward shape. So um, I tend to get somebody to give me a hand to roll it. I have rolled it by myself, but it, it's easier with, a, with an assistant.
over the years a few people have suggested to me that I bought one of these Japanese saws and I've been a bit reluctant I'll admit I've always been happy enough with western saws but um, my favourite online tool shop Dieter Schmidt Fine Tools they do not sponsor me in any way has these on special offer this month so I bought one and thought I'd try it out and uh, I've tried it I've tried to use it a fair bit this week on different things um, and I have to say I'm quite impressed really very sharp cuts really well it's got a, the blades okay for cross cut or rip according to the specs um, I can't say I'm wild about the handle I'd prefer a you know a western style handle I think but it cuts really well and, and obviously the flexi blade would allow you to cut close to a surface um, yeah it's very good and I guess I will say this, if I only had one saw, that wouldn't be a bad option. So here's the, the keel structure as it stands at the moment. And uh, a couple of people asked me questions about that or this last week, a couple of regular viewers, and I thought I'd uh, address those. I believe it was Pierre who asked me, um, if I was going to go for a single central keel or bilge keels to at the sides, bilge keels obviously would give you the advantage of, of being able to sit on the bottom if you were drying out in a drying out harbour, for example. And I seriously considered bilge keels. Um, I thought long and hard about it. Obviously, great advantages, especially with a flat bottom bow like this, very easy to fit. Um, and in the end, I decided against it because I have followed the designer's recommendations in everything that's structural in this boat. Um, well, you know, the, the internal frames that I fitted were actually above and beyond designer, but I've followed his recommendations. And the designer has a single, uh, two keel options. One's a long single down the middle keel, which is the one I'm going for. The other one's a fin keel. Uh, there are no bilge keel options designed for this boat. I think actually the designer says that it's a possibility and he would do them for an additional fee or something like that, but um, I've stuck to the designer. And the single central keel has the big advantage that it protects the sail drive leg and the rudder at the back. Two bilge keels on the sides would leave the sail drive leg exposed. You'd have to put a skeg or something there to protect that and the rudder, or you'd have double rudders, which would be hard on a, on a double ender. So I'm going for the, the, as per design, single central long keel. And then Panu, who um, has his own YouTube channel called Arctic Sea Camel, and he's actually just starting to build a boat himself. He's in the, in the, at the stage of building the boat shed, but his, his YouTube channel is well worth checking out. I recommend it. Um, he asked me, wouldn't it have been wiser to fit these while the boat was upside down. And, you know, there's no doubt he's absolutely right, it would have been. And it's just a bit of dodgy planning on my behalf, really. Doing it this way was a mistake. If I were to do it again, I would fit these parts to get that flat through the hull, aft and fore to aft. I would fit them when the boat was upside down. And I just hadn't thought it through well enough. And, and that leads me to the point that um, the really the reason why I'm doing this channel is is that I thought there was a, a, a lack of information about the building of these boats. I, I think they're very suited to the home builder, and I really felt that, as I say, a lack of information about how to build these boats. So I, I decided to record the entire thing. If you're following on and intended to build yourself a Benford Dory with a long keel, I thoroughly recommend that you put these parts here on while the boat's upside down. First of all, we'll just take that in. Come back. Come back. back, 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 back. Just a minute. Don't do anything there. Okay, slide up for it. We're about the right length.
Just a minute, don't do anything inside the turret. And that, ladies and gents, is where I'm going to leave you this week. Um, I spent a significant amount of time marking this one out. This is the final piece that's going up under the boat. It goes all the way from the bow, actually the aft end to the bow. Um, I've measured out, marked it every 10 centimeters. I've taken measurements off the bottom of the boat. I've now began planing it to, to shape and uh, making progress. Hope to get that on this week, intend to get that on this week, and that'll be the final piece that's going on the bottom of the boat. And then we can come in here, the rudder will be out of the way, completely encapsulated. We can start cutting pieces to build the wooden keel in here, the bit that will be you know, the, the bulk of the wooden keel. That, I anticipate we'll go quickly with a, with a flat surface on the top and then we'll be thinking about ballast. Exciting times. Massive thank you from me to you for watching and to the lovely people who support us on Patreon and PayPal. You guys make this thing possible. You rock. And we'll be back next time. See you then. Bye.